Welcome back to episode 5 of my world map tutorial series. This time we want to set it up so that we can right click anywhere on our map to place markers at that position and then also spawn actors in the level at the matching location. Let's start off with creating the widget for the markers. So in our widgets folder we want to add a new user interface widget blueprint and let's just call that w underscore marker. We want to put this in our w underscore world map later so we can set it to desired on screen. Move the canvas panel. The design is actually very simple. We only need a size box and an image that we want to add to that. Select the size box and make that a variable. So we will call it marker size box and check the is variable boolean. Then we can hit width and height override and the default size can be something like 48 pixel. Then you can select your image and that also needs to be a variable. Let's just call it marker. For the image you will find the icon underscore marker from the asset pack you downloaded. And that's actually already it for the design. Just for a bit of visual appeal we will add an animation. So when we place a marker it will slowly focus on the actual spot. Let's hit the animation button and let's just call that fade in and double click it. Then we've got access to the timeline. And what we want to animate is the render opacity of the marker and the scale. So let's set the scale to 5 and 5 and hit the keyframe button. Then we'll say we'll go to 0.4 seconds. And after 0.4 seconds it should be reset to 1. Hit the keyframe button. And when we start the render opacity should be 0. Hit the button. And at the end it will be fully opaque, so 1. It seems like I forgot to set the keyframe at 0 for the render opacity, so just type in 0 again and hit that button. Now if we play that animation, you can see it's slowly focusing on the actual location. Let's compile save, close the widget and reopen it, because playing with the animation sometimes messes up the actual widget. And it did that here, so let's reset the render opacity to 1. That's it already for all of the visual stuff, so let's head over to the graph. And we need a couple of variables. So first off, we will keep track of the size. This time we don't have to use a vector 2D because the icon here is put in a square shape, so 48 by 48 means it would be enough to keep track of one size. Let's make that an integer and private. Then we add another variable and that will be the index which we will later use to identify which of the markers this widget is used for. Make it editable and exposed on spawn. We also need a color. So later we can have differently colored markers. Type of that is linear color, editable, exposed on spawn. And the last thing we need is a reference to the map. So let's just call it map reference. And the type here will be a BPC world map object reference. Also editable and exposed on spawn. Pile save. Let's add one function to update the size. Like with our player icon, the size may change when zooming in and out. This needs one input of type integer. We can call that new size. And first off set our internal variable here to the input. Then get your marker size box and set the width override to the size, so just convert that to a float. And after that, set the height override to the same value. Then we can go into a return node to finish this function and compile save. Back in our event graph, we can implement the event construct. So when this widget here is created, and first off, call update size. We'll be asking you for a new size. Let's actually make that a setting for the world map component so we can define the default size of markers there. Let's go to the actors, BPC world map, add a variable called markers size of the variable type integer, editable, exposed on spawn, and in the settings category. Then let's compile save and maybe use something like 35 pixel back in our widget. We can then simply get this variable from the map reference, so marker size, and hook it up for the new size. Then we also want to update the color of this widget. Get your marker image, set color and opacity, and get your color variable, hook it up. Then once everything is set up here, we can play an animation. And that will be our fade in animation. That's it already for this widget. We can close it 
and let's go to the w underscore world map where we want to put that in. So this is where our map overlay here comes in place because we can simply add marker widgets to the overlay and they will be displayed on top of the character and the map. You can remove it. Let's head over to the graph and add a function called add marker to map. In here we want to create a widget. So create widget of the type w underscore marker and then it will be asking you for a bunch of variables. So let's drag the index onto the add marker to map and that way we will add an input and do the same thing for color and map reference. Then we will select our function and there is one last variable that we need of type vector 2d which will be the starting position where we want to add it. So let's just call that position and give it one output of the type w underscore marker object reference called widget. So the widget that this function created should be returned. After we've created the widget, grab your map overlay and add a child to overlay. Then we can connect the return value as content. After that, the only thing left to do would be updating the position. So off of your return value, set the render translation to the position from your input. You can go into the return node and hook up the return value from the create node as your output. All right, we can compile save close the widget and let's create the actor that we want to spawn in the world so under actors create a new blueprint class of the type actor you can just call that bp underscore marker open it up now you can add whatever you want to this actor i will only add a simple particle system so that we can see something and let's say for the template we will use the p underscore sparks from the starter content and let's scale that up by a bit so we can hit the padlock here and enter a three to increase the size. And I just figured out that a location of minus 30 works pretty well when we add it to the level later. Right, for me that's already enough. Let's compile, save and close this actor. Before we figure out a way to store all of the current markers in our BPC world map, let's say we want to combine all of the important variables for a marker in a structure. Go to world map system and we'll create a new folder for structures. In there, let's right click and create a new blueprint structure. Call it something like s underscore marker info. Then we'll go in there. And now we have to decide which variables make up a marker. First off, every marker has a location in the actual world that it represents. So we'll call that world location. And the type for that will be a vector. Then for every marker, we hopefully have a widget. So that will be a W underscore marker reference. And then we want to have different colors. So color and type here will be linear color. And finally, there is the actor in the world. So marker actor. Type for that BP underscore marker object reference. Then we can save and close the S marker info and we can head over to our BPC world map. To store all of the markers, we only need one variable called current markers. Type here will be the structure we created. So S underscore marker info. And of course, this needs to be an array because we can store more than one marker at a time. And let's make this private. Then we need a function here to add marker, which would require one input of our structure so s underscore marker info call this something like marker to add or just marker we will grab our array and add an element hook up the input then let's grab the output integer here that is the index so promote a local variable called local index then we can grab the map reference and add marker to map it will be asking you for an index, so that is the local index. We'll implement different colors later. For now, that will simply be white. The map reference is simply self. And for the position, we can grab location to map position. For the location, break the input marker and get your world location. Then for the widget size, we will make a vector 2D. And under settings, we've got access to the marker size. So drag that in and hook it up for X and Y. Then the output can feed into our position. And we want to store the widget that was created in the actual structure added to the array. 
So grab your current markers and get a reference at the local index. And then we can set members in s underscore marker info. If you right click that node, we can restore all structure pins, then hook up the widget, right click the widget variable, and all of the other variables should stay the same. So we will hit remove all other pins. After that, we can return and compile and save. When we actually right click the map, we still need to figure out that world location because then we only have a two dimensional vector for the position on the map. Basically, we want to do the reverse thing for location to map position. Let's add a function called map position to world location. And this needs one input type will be vector 2D. So that would be the position on the map. Just call that position and it would return a vector of three dimensions that we would just call location. You can actually make this a pure function. Get your input and break that here. Then grab the X and divide that by another float and then get your map reference, get the map size X and hook that up to the division. What we get here can be promoted to a local variable called local percentage in X. And we want to do the same thing for Y. So divide the Y here by the map reference map size Y. And promote that to local percentage in Y. Set it right after the X. Then we can split the out vector and we can leave Z at zero because we haven't got information about that. But for X and Y, we can figure these out with the local percentages here. So let's drag in the upper left corner, get the actor location. And we want to break that, figure out the X, we'll get the X here and subtract from that. Then get the map height and multiply that by another float which will be the local percentage in Y. Connect that to the subtraction and then the minus node to location X. For Y, we get the location of upper left, use the Y, but this time we need to add a float and get the map width, then multiply it by another float, which will be local percentage in X up to the plus node and the add node to location y. All right, so that's actually very simple. Just keep in mind that the x of an actor location equals the y of a two-dimensional vector. Currently, we've got a problem though, and that is the z here, which is currently set to zero. So if we were to spawn our marker actor, they would all be placed at the origin in z. What we actually want to do is in our map from a very high location, we will just trace down to that location it was converted to and stop when we hit something solid like our platforms or the water floor here. So back in our BPC world map, let's add a function called trace down world location. You can also make this pure. It takes in one vector and also puts out a vector. You can just call these in and out. Let's get our input and promote that to a local variable called local in. And then to trace down, we will use a line trace by channel. Now we can right click and split the start. Grab our local in and break that here. We can connect the X and Y. And for the Z, let's promote that to a variable, not a local variable, but just a common variable called trace down height. Let's make it editable, expose on spawn, put it in our settings, and we want to compile save to give it a default value. Basically, you just have to figure out the highest spot in your world and use a value that is above that. So for me, 2000 units would already work. For the end, you can just plug in the local in. And that way, your line will just go straight downwards because the start and end point are only different in Z. We can add a branch off of the return value. So that would be whether we actually hit something. If not, we can just return our local in. But if we did hit something, let's also return and break the out hit. Then you've got access to a lot of variables here and we only care about the location that we hit. Pile and save. That's it for functions. Let's head over to the event graph. Somewhere here, let's add a custom event called onMap 
clicked. And this, of course, needs to know about the location where we clicked. So let's add a new parameter of type vector 2D called position. Then we want to spawn an actor of the class BP marker. After that, let's right click the spawn transform. So we have access to location, rotation and scale. And for the location, we'll convert a map to position to world location, hook up the input and then also trace down the world location and connect the location as the input. Then we can use the out for the location of our created actor. After that, we can call add marker. Let's split the struct pin and hook up the location from our trace down world location. Then the return value as the marker actor. Marker widget can leave empty. And here let's select white as the color with an alpha of one. And I actually made a mistake because in our add marker function, we should just use the color of the input marker. So show the color here and hook that up. That way we can just define the color in our event here and not in the function. That's everything for our component. We need to call this event somehow. That we can only do from the actual world map widget. If we head over to the graph, under mouse we already implemented on mouse button down. Currently we're just checking for the left mouse button. So before we do anything in here, let's add a branch off of your mouse event called is mouse button down. And this time we can use the right mouse button. That up to the branch. Only if it's false, we will proceed with the other branch. But if it's true, let's set the LMB down to false and then get our map reference and call on map clicked. For the position here, we will get the mouse event and get the current screen space position. Then grab the my geometry and we want to convert absolute to local. The absolute coordinates being the screen space position. After that, we also want to subtract something from that. So vector minus vector. And that would be the map overlays render translation that we can change when zooming in and moving the map. So get render transform and break it, then only show the translation and plug that in for the minus. Then that can go into our position. And after that, we can return and say that this function was handled. Let's compile and save. Let's play and hit M to open up our map. Now I can right click somewhere. You see there is a white marker now. And if we move to that location, there are some sparks. Actually, it looks like they are put somewhere in that platform. So that will be our actors BP marker viewport and then reset the location in Z to zero maybe. Let's check whether that's now working. So I hit M, right click somewhere. Yep. Now we see the actor appearing here and there is a marker on our world map at the exact location. We can right click as many times as we want and add more of these markers and particle systems in our world. Right now, however, there is a list of problems. For example, we cannot remove these markers. Can right click them and we will just spawn new markers, but won't remove old ones. Also, they currently all have the same color, which is just white. So that is something to change. And there is an infinite amount of markers possible right now. There is no maximum, which you usually have in games. And the last issue would be that when we zoom in, all of the positions are messed up and are no longer correct. So all of these problems will be tackled in the next episode and this is the end of this video so see you in the next one.